hypothetical viewers, and welcome back to Shining Force Final Conflict. We uh, went to chat with King Gallum, but we're attacked by monsters. We are going to have to make sure to pick up this one treasure chest, so I'm going to have the characters go to the left here, because the middle is actually blocked by fire, so the map is like not quite as open as it seems. <laughs> we're a little fenced in. Uh, I also did just take a quick peek, and in the next chapter we'll get our, ne our new secret character, and then after that... This is battle 18, and there's only 22 battles. And the the final battle is like, like in most Shining 4 games, there's a part 1 and a part 2. So 21 and 22 are like part of one big battle, basically. Uh, so we're really right at the end of the game here. And yeah, we'll eventually get... Uh, the secret character is not the last we'll recruit. We have another two friends we'll eventually meet. So we may end up dropping some characters. Sasuke will probably be dropped for the new secret character. And if I decide to keep him, which I might, because uh, he has a cool unique sprite, so I'm like, even though he's just a melee attacker, I'm still like, that's cool. You know, he's unique. That makes it fun. Um, we want the other two as well, <laughs> so we might be making some additional drops. We'll have to see. But uh, this battle feels like it is mostly filler, and then once we get to the end of the game, it'll be like all the plot happens, <laughs> just very suddenly. The item in the, the ch in the chest in this chapter is the Kaiser Knuckles, and I have to say, I don't know whether it's ultimately going to matter because the only people who use Knuckles weapons are Master Monks. Uh, right now we have Knuckles in our party, and he's perfectly fine. There's nothing bad about him at all. I just like, I I feel very neutral towards him, even though he was like one of our first characters because he's not actually that great at healing. She got a level up, she got a little attack. I think she got plus one attack there. Um, so like, he doesn't necessarily, like, we haven't really, you know, we've been, we might need to keep an extra healer, but we've been okay for now. As we get into these last battles, we're, we're gonna be facing, like, more and more enemies, so we may need to sort of really double up on healing, but, you know, he's like, he's a character that's, he's like, aggressively okay. You have to keep in mind when looking at his stats here, he's much higher level than everyone else, he's already at level 14. So yeah, his attack is good, but it's not actually that much better than everyone else. He's just higher level. So he's like, he's fine, but that's it. So if I was going to drop someone, he might be the drop. Um, and then if I would choose to drop a third person, I guess we'll find my dumb Julia for being terrible. <laughs> we'll have to see. Either that or honestly, a better choice might even be Howl, just because like, his problem is his MP still. He still has not really gotten that much MP. He's okay, but he can only do, like, three Blaze 3 per battle, and that's still it. And that's just not very much, considering the number of enemies we face these days. So, at least Julia can continue attacking the entire battle. She doesn't do a ton, but at least she'll continue to do 7 to 10 damage. It's more than he does <laughs> when his magic is gone. Um, so, yeah, I just really like Howl, though, so I'm sort of like middling on keeping him. In most of the Shining Force games, I've kept the mages even when they stopped being particularly good. But the thing is, they usually had more MP. They were able to at least use spells a bit more frequently than that. So, this is what I mean. Like, Necklace, he's fine. He does damage. He's higher level than everyone else, so that's, you know, most of my melee, so that's why he does so much. But he's not a bad unit at all. I just, maybe it's because he's been so high level for so long, you know, like, level healers are faster that I'm kind of mad on him. <laughs> I'm like, ah, I've had you all this time. You've already gotten so many levels. <laughs> but, yeah, that's what I'm thinking in terms of potential drops. But yeah, we are really coming right up to the end of the game. We are uh, closing in. We're on battle 18 and 22. I'm hoping to level Sinet up a bit more, because if she could just get a bit more attack, like, she'll be fantastic. Because the range 3, she's already quite useful even with a just okay attack, because range 3 gives us an extra layer of attackers and lets her stay a bit further away from danger so we don't get quite as clustered up for like magic and stuff. Um, but with a little more attack she'd be really excellent. So I'm hoping we can get her to move levels. I think the next map has some like good level grinding opportunities so it's possible maybe we'll do a little of that just try and bump people up a little. Prepped for the finale. But uh, the finale definitely is, uh, is a perfect here. And the game, this game is kind of fascinating to me in terms of its story. Because I would say, like, the first chapter of it, 
actually had like I which I in the first chapter is honestly like the Ruberon arc because that's the chapter where basically at the end of it we recruit Ruberon. It is it, it sort of the, uh, it's us chasing him and stuff a bit. So that kind of had its own little internal story. But then after that, a lot of it has kind of just been wandering from place to place, following Michela. And a lot of the main thrust of it has been why do we go to these specific places? Because they're places from Shining Force too. So it's kind of really leaning heavily into the this game is a bridge between Shining Force 1 and 2. Um, maybe in a way at the expense of this game having its own plot. <laughs> Very much of one anyway. Uh, but but the thing is I haven't disliked it at all. It's fun and I think what plot elements it does have are kind of like some of them are a little goofy in a fun way and like, it's got enough going on that I'm like I like it and there's actually a decent amount of like, for a game that doesn't have a ton of story, it has a decent amount of cutscenes and characters talking. So I feel like, especially just over in the first half of the game, we had a pretty good amount of development of kind of our our own little party here. And then in the second half, we've had a, a fair amount of, you know, stuff for each villain, kind of getting a look at what their deal is and, like, their personality and stuff. And so... And like with each character that's joined us, we've gotten at least a peek at kind of their like why did they join us and their like motives or personality or whatever. So for a game that doesn't have very much going on in the story, it actually has a surprising amount of like character development and like writing and interaction. So although the plot is not detailed in any particular way, it's pretty engaging and I I'm like, you know, I'm good with it. <laughs> I thought this game you know, it's fun. But, uh, but it is kind of weird that we're like going into the finale and it, we're still, it's still kind of just like, what is this game about? I guess the game is literally just, it's about you fighting Michela for reasons. <laughs> it's like surprisingly little. The character recruitment has kind of reflected this in that the bulk of the characters we have we got right at the start of the game. And then we kind of have just gotten one here and there and not a ton and now we're getting like two secret characters and then obviously at the end of the game we eventually are going to meet Max again. And he's our, uh, you know, our last character. Which is similar to, um, the Shining Force Gaiden 2, when we got Nick at the end. Prince Nick. And even Shining Force Gaiden 1, when we finally got Lug at the end. So, that's not weird at all, but it is kind of, like, it's a little backloaded in terms of characters, in a way. And, and, like, sort of weirdly, like, not, like, Max is plot relevant, but the others are kind of, like, the two secret characters, and then it's just, like, <laughs> they have nothing to do with anything. Oh, we're getting so much defense for Sunet, which is nice because she was so fragile for so long, but it's also like, A, you have the highest range of any of my characters, so you don't really need to be a tank, and B, I would prefer to have every single point of that in your attack. <laughs> it's more important that you are able to kill stuff. <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. How it really is kind of the... He actually, I would say, he's gonna die here, I guess, too. Oh, well. Sorry, Hal, I'm not restarting just for you. I'll tell you weren't gonna do a lot. Canaanites are pretty strong. They also have some extremely cool looking hats, I will say. They look fancy as hell. But uh, maybe I should, as much as I like it, maybe I should just, when we get the new characters, swap them out because as much as I'm bitching about Julia, she is actually more useful than him because he'll do damage three times in the battle, basically, and then nothing. At least she's consistent. <laughs> and she's more mobile. I guess I'll give his running ring to someone else. <sighs> I could give it to Ruberon because he's by far like one of the best characters, so he's the most useful to have it. Or I could give it to like one of the characters who's maybe not quite as useful, but you know, a little more mobility would make them more useful. Kiddo, like, it, it sort of works with his crazy mobility because he's flying, so we can get him wherever we want. Sinet, so she can kind of get into position easily to make range attacks. Who knows? It, there's options. All of them would be more useful than Howl. I hate to say it, but <laughs> he's just not very good. Ruberon, you're ridiculous. Look at this guy. <laughs> he's just, like, too good. This Harpy Queen. I'm also, this will be the last episode for today because I'm actually starting to lose my voice a little. I, I have to say, I used to be able to do this kind of thing for like 
several hours without losing my voice, and part of that was because pre-pandemic I played D&D every week, and I was the DM, so, you know, you're, you're the one reading the description every time the characters go into a new location, you know, you're the one, I, you know, doing a lot of the- anytime they talk to an NPC, you're the NPC, so you talk a lot. Um, you know, it's something you're doing every week. And I also sang in a choir every week, which I don't now. So my voice was like a lot more <laughs> enduring. But now after this long pandemic in which sometimes I could go like a couple like a full week without talking to anyone, um, I feel like I have lost some vocal endurance. <laughs> I gotta build it back up. Dang. These arch knights are strong, but yeah, this is gonna have to be the last one for today, but we're pretty close to the end, and I will say, after wrapping <laughs> wrapping up a uh, Transverse Conflict, uh, Final Conflict, I really need to actually post some shit, because I have both of the guide games, and then I'll have this. <laughs> oh, Julia got some attack! Okay, well that's something. Maybe someday she'll be useful. Someday. <laughs> maybe. Before the end of the game, maybe. Let's take a peek. Oh, that's an 46 attack? You know, it's... I mean, she's already catching up with Sasuke, and he, I think the shuriken is a particularly good weapon, like, the, the, both the thief and the ninjas got, had weapons that were very expensive, but are actually quite good, so that does help them. Um, let's see, we're gonna have kind of a gap in the middle here, so let's, uh, not go too, too far ahead, let's kind of regroup. Who is injured? So that's injured, that's, uh... Actually, since Knuckles are there, and I want to save Cynthia's MP for when we have everyone injured and need aura, let's have Knuckles so everyone gets injured. He's not an immediate danger. I'm leaving some enemies behind us, but like, I, they're not important. <laughs> if they catch up, we can fight them, whatever. Um, but yeah, this will be... Man, I... <laughs> I'll be right back a lot. Love the... I even have, like, descriptions for the episodes for YouTube and everything. I did... I wrote, did, I wrote up everything. And I meant to post them once I was back in my, you know, where I normally live. I was visiting my parents for a while who have crappy internet, and so you could never upload a video there. <laughs> so I meant to post them, and then it just, I never got around to it. So I'm like way, way back on. But again, it's fine. No one was waiting for them. It's not a big deal. <laughs> <coughs> but I should actually do that. If nothing else, I cannot say that I have a popular YouTube channel, and I cannot say that I have an actually good YouTube channel. But at that point, I will be able to say, at, if nothing else, I have an impressive amount of content. <laughs> Sheer content. Because once I post everything, I'll have Shining Force 1, 2, Guide 1 and 2, and this, which basically is a third guide game. Um, so that's like, hey, five full RPGs? You know, tactic RPGs? Not bad. <laughs> it's not good in terms of quality <laughs> or popularity, but it's not bad in terms of sheer quantity. <laughs> you know, it's important to, to pick the correct metric when you measure these things, so pick the one that makes you look better, I guess. <laughs> these are fun to do, though, so I have nothing else. I mean, like, your hobby should at least be entertaining to you, right? <laughs> if nothing else. What the hell? I, I was sort of, I was about to say, oh, this is gonna hurt. We clustered up for the witch, but no, the high the high witch decided to just bop us with her staff <laughs> for one damage. What the hell? <laughs> what a baffling AI. Sometimes the shining force AI will really surprise you, where like magic using enemies, in a case where you're very much in a position where they can hit multiple characters with magic, will just attack you with their dinky little staff instead, and you're like, what the hell? Ah, what a roller coaster of emotion. We managed to get two attacks, but Okay, for once I am actually gonna have her use blast simply because it will kill the high priest. Um, and she's not in a position to make a melee attack. And I wanna kill the high priest before he starts healing everyone. Well done, Cynthia. You are actually a very useful character. With aura and even the occasional uh, blast. And you know, I think could finish off the high witch, which will Yes, it will protect us from being hit with magic. Oh, what an- I don't even get a level, he's just too good. <laughs> he's too good. More defense doesn't hurt because he tends to be a little fragile. And Rupert might as well kill the skeleton, whatever, let's just kind of move on. Let's just make the, the already good characters even better. And we can always grind a little in the next battle if needed. You know, just kind of catch everyone up a little. Let's just take a peek here. Uh, wait, oh! 
Okay, I thought this was a level where there was a monster at the bottom who was a boss, but apparently this is a defeat everyone level, so... I, I shouldn't have ignored those enemies. I was like, eh, whatever, they're not important. We don't have to fight them. We do have to fight them. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's go back. <laughs> we walked all the way to the bottom of the map. Now we can walk back. <laughs> How absurd. So this really was just a filler battle. It's like, this was nothing. It's got a chest and that's it. Like, there was really very little point to it. The map was not... The map isn't really annoying, but it's just not interesting. It's just like, well, you just walk in, in one direction. That's all there is to it. You have the fire to, like, make it not literally just a big empty space, but it doesn't really make it more interesting. Hey, what a... Why did they... What, did they just... Were they just like, we want to have 22 chapters, so I will have to put an extra one? Like, why did they even have this? It appears to have no purpose. I, yeah, I really don't know. Maybe it's like, uh, you can level grind or something, but you can level grind in the next map, I, I, according to the thing I looked at. The one thing that's strange about the walkthrough, I'm like, sort of, I, I looked at to figure out what the secret characters were and stuff, and just like, you know, what chapter to look out for them. The parties they recommend, they really recommend that you use the dragon guy that you got, even though he's really crappy. It's possible that maybe if you carefully trained him up, he would eventually get less crappy, but I really don't think he would ever be even close to some of the other characters. Like, I, I'm just like, why would you bother? <laughs> maybe the author just thought he was very cool? I can sympathize with that. I totally use crappy characters just because they're cool, but... Oh, that'll grab everyone. Might as well use it, right? You know, maybe she'll level up. <laughs> I didn't keep track of her ex, but she's gotta be close. She's been using aura <laughs> on and off. Very good, very good. We're all topped up. Man, Sasuke has terrible MP and uh, uh, HP as well. He's so... It's really almost shocking how crappy he is. Yeah, she's quite close. Like, dang, he can just die in a second. He's fragile as heck. Is that what all the characters would be like if I didn't level them all the way up to 20? Would they actually be that garbage? I guess the game will be a lot harder in that case, but dang, it would be like so hard that it would be annoying. <laughs> like, holy shit. That would actually suck. Uh, sure, let's have Paige charge on in here and kill the golem. Why not? Woot. <sighs> Excellent. Excellent. Ah, uh, nice big attack boost. Tanky and strong. Paige has turned out great. And Sinette. Ooh, maybe she can kill the brass gunner and maybe level up. Ugh, oh, we're getting a lot of dodges here. Uh, it wouldn't kill me to get another level, I will say. He's only level 7. Let's do it. I, I may do a little grinding just to bump Sonette up with the other. She was she was one of the last ones I managed to promote, so she was a little behind. But uh, I do want to have her nice and strong because the range three is good. Oh, the king is back. He ran. I don't know where he went. There's not a door that he could have escaped through. He was hiding under the curtain. You have demonstrated great skill in your fighting technique. This is another sentence where you're like, this feels like it was like translated by an AI. It just feels you uh, very clunky. You have demonstrated great skill in your fighting technique. It's just awkward. With such skill, surely you can defeat the devil army. Though I do not know if it will be of any use to you. I can offer you a sword. Someone bring it to me. Who? This guy. Your highness, is this the one? It is indeed. We confiscated this sword from a man in the devil army. When doing so, the devil army sent for me. Ah, nah, this is unmistakably Master Max's sword. Your highness has Master Max been through here. Oh, him? He certainly has. <laughs> oh, him? <laughs> he certainly has. Excellent. Master Max has been here. Then this sword possesses the powers of light. It's a very important sword, so please accept it from his highness. Ben received the Chaos Breaker. You may remember this sword from Shining Force 1, where we originally received the Sword of Light, and our bro that we didn't know was our bro had the Sword of Darkness, and then we combined them to make the Chaos Breaker, which was like the ultimate sword that could defeat Dark Dragon. So this sword is still kicking around. Well then, everyone, before you face the final battles, it would be best for you to rest in town a while. Near our camp. Uh, I'm going to... That was a really short battle. This has only been 19 minutes, even with the cutscene. So let's res howl, see if there's anything to buy. Just fluff it out a little. That was so short. It was like 
really a filler battle. I guess it was just so we could get this sword. What does that mean? It's time to relight the embers. Okay, let's see if there's anything new since the last battle. Probably not. Oh, we are wrong. There is new stuff. Oh, the Valkyrie. We found one in a chest, and in previous games, there's only been one per game. But here, we can just buy it, so both of our, pa our, our paladins can have one, which is great. Critical Sword, the Great Axe, the Battle Knuckles, uh, still just the Power Stick, the Great Shot, and the Dark Shuriken. Holy shit, between the last battle and this one, we got a massive jump in equipment. Okay, so let's start buying shit. <laughs> Obviously, Ruberon gets one first, because he is the much more important character. I think we'll actually have enough for everyone to get everything, though. And we can always grind if we need more. We may as well give him the better weapon, because we're going to be using it for the next battle anyway, so... Uh, great shot. Sinet's gotta have a nice weapon. Uh, we're gonna need to make space for it. Uh, actually, yeah, let me shuffle my items a little first, just to make room. Prepare to, depart for, prepare to depart for battle. And I guess we won't need to buy a better sword for him. He's got- dang, because he's got the best sword. I, I don't know if we'll need like a backup, because I don't know if Max will need to use it at the end of the game. Obviously we'll eventually need him. But, uh, and let's have him give the counter sword. Um... Honestly, let's give it to Julia in the hope that someday she'll be less shitty. Like... <laughs> kiddo doesn't really need the extra help. He's doing fine. Um... Oh yeah, Sinet must have picked the power ring up at some point. Do you know what? I'm gonna have her keep it, because she is a little behind in terms of attack, and that will give her a very nice boost. And then, let's see... Yeah, the counter sword is a bit better, so with that... I want to point out that she's still not even close to being as good as Kiddo, <laughs> but... Like, she'll at least do decent damage, she'll be okay, I guess. She'll be tolerable. Okay, now we're gonna buy some more items, gonna do this whole shopping trip on camera. Why the hell not? Um, so, we're gonna buy the Great Shot for Sinet. Yeah. And, thank you, there. We already got that and that. We don't need the Power Stick because we actually already had one. <laughs> and we, I think we must have picked some up. I don't know, maybe from chess, but we basically already got that. Uh, Battle Knuckles, you know, why not? We'll give that to Knuckles. We already bought everyone a weapon last battle, and now we're buying more. I'm, I, I sh maybe I should have checked ahead of my guide and seen which shops upgrade to what, but I didn't know and just bought everyone everything. A Great Axe. We may finally outcompete the Heat Axe, which we found in a chest and Paige has had for a while. Um, but we have finally found something that I think will be better. We're gonna need one Valkyrie, we've already got one, but this will replace the Power Spear. One moment I sneeze. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was... that was intense. <laughs> Sorry. I flipped up the microphone, but I probably should have just paused. That was louder than I thought it would be. Every LP, every single one I've recorded, there has been like sneezing or other stuff. I'm like, I have ter terrible allergies. Even with allergy medication, I'm still, like, constantly... <laughs> the problem. Uh, so I guess we'll just buy this for Kiddo. I, I don't think we'll need... Because the Counter Sword, I think, is, like, a special item that lets you do counter attacks. Um, no, not use. Let's, uh... Quit. I just want to check. Yeah, so this is, like, a 7-point advantage. And then let's compare that to... Actually, this is only a four-point advantage, so you know what I will do? I'm gonna give him the counter sword. I, I know that that might seem counterintuitive to you. Counterintuitive, huh? But, um, because you might think, like, well, give the best weapon to the strongest person. Oh, right, the Kaiser Knuckles may even be better than these ones, so we may have bought those for nothing, please. But, um, Kato's attack is so high that he doesn't really- he'll be fine regardless, you know? Uh, and the counter sword has a special, I think it has like a special effect probably that makes you more likely to counterattack, so that'll be useful for him. And we'll sell off the brass knuckles when we get around to it. Um, meanwhile, Julia has like a really crappy attack, and so giving her the edge of the critical sword, like even those extra three points, will help her actually do damage that can ha be useful and like have a meaningful effect. Whereas he's already 
Like, even with just the old broadswords, this attack is 77. And the counter sword, like, it's more than enough. That little bit of extra attack that, like, the extra three points that the, like, uh, critical sword will give is not going to matter that much for him. He's already destroying everything anyway. Whereas for Julia, it could be the difference between her being perpetually mediocre and actually tolerable. And then he can benefit from the... And, and the extra critical hits will kill her either. So, <laughs> they could kill some enemies. Yeah, the Kaiser Knuckles are already better. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I should have checked. I didn't realize there were cursed items. Okay, well, it's fine. We'll cure him. <sighs> Man. Vagaries of life. Yeah, this is better than he does. Uh, okay, and then we're gonna need to cure Knuckles. Exhausted, yes, yes. Help cure... Yes, please, please do. Man, we are actually low on gold now. We This was a shopping extravaganza. We spent like 50,000 gold. Uh, and now we'll want to equip the weapon that is not cursed. And it's only 7 points better. It's not like it's absurd or anything. It's, oh well. What a shame. Well, now we'll sell off all our old crap. What was the point of the Kaiser Knuckles? We went through all the trouble to find that in a chest, and it's not- it's a cursed item, so we won't even use it. It's just garbage. It's straight up garbage. I'm hoping that- I'm sort of assuming when Max shows up, at the very least, um, he'll have some sort of weapon of his own. And so, I know the Hedex is a very unique item, but I'm not gonna use it again, and I never- it only does, like, Blaze 2, which is not honestly that good. So, <laughs> I'm just selling it. It'll be in the deals forever. Whatever, it's fine. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, I'm assuming that when we get Max, I, maybe he will be totally unequipped, though. Like, that's my one concern. I'm kind of like, oh shit, like, maybe we'll, like, end up in a situation where we don't actually have enough weapons because, you know, we're using this special weapon for uh, my boy here. So maybe I'll buy him a spare critical sword just in the off chance that we don't have anything at the end, and because we're gonna want to have Max just like a chaos break or whatever. But he may come with his own weapon. I don't know. Uh, I'll probably buy an extra just in case though. It's not like we don't have enough gold. We, we recouped quite a lot from selling everything. Yeah, so we'll just give that to him in case we need it in future. And then let's check the. Healing Rain. Mm. I think the Brave Apple, I actually think the reason this is here is because because normally the stuff that's in here is, uh, there's a couple things that are just rare items, and there's also if we sell off unique items, they end up here so they're not perma-lost. Uh, and it also looks like in this game specifically, but not in other Shining Force games, it also has every item that's in the game that's not kept in the shop anymore, because the shop stays current. Um, so you can't buy a middle sword anymore, except here, in case you want it for, I don't know, posterity. But, uh, you can see, like, the Kaiser Knuckles is here now. And, like, the Heat Axe will be here. But, I think the reason the Brave Apple is here, the only stat boost item we have available, is because <clears throat> there was a Brave Apple and a chest in one battle that we actually didn't manage to get, because the battle, I, I ended up defeating every enemy before we even reached it. Ironically, that's a battle I'm eventually going to have to go back and do another video of using the save states. I, I keep our carpal save states. Uh, because the audio quality was bad. But that obviously won't affect the playthrough because it's just going to be a one-off with that save state. We're not going to replay everything post that. Um, but I think it ended up here because we didn't get it in that battle. So I will buy it. To my knowledge, all it does is raise your level by one. But what the fuck ever. <laughs> now we have it. Um, this will take up like, all our gold. But I think I will take it. Because I think it's going to be very useful in the final battle. And I'll give it to Cynthia for when she runs out of MP. Because what it does, the Healing Rain, basically it's an Aura 4 item. It heals every character on the map. Um, and the final battle, if previous Shining Forest games have taught me anything, is that in the final battle, your entire army is going to be constantly being like destroyed by some mass AoE attack of the boss. So having even one extra copy, basically, of Aura 4 that we can cast uh, could really be the difference between victory and defeat. And now let's use the Brave Apple, it raises your level by one. So, do we have anyone who's very, very low level? We have Julia, Sunette, and Howl. You know, Howl might get dropped eventually anyway. Let's use him on it, it on him while we got it. We got more MP. Very nice. 
and he, you know, level determines um, when he uh, gets more spells. So, uh, and that's also I did not realize that Ridian is an actual character we equip. He's a gladiator, just like Paige. He's at level nine, so he's actually only one level different from Paige. So we can compare them pretty well. Uh, Paige blows him out of the water in HP, diggity dang, and much better in attack. And they. They don't have the same weapon. He has a crappier weapon, admittedly, but still. A 23 points higher in attack is substantial. He's 10 points better in defense. He's like 7 points better in agility, so he's just better in literally every way. So I guess that really is the impact of leveling all the way up to level 20. It makes an extraordinary amount of difference. Like, holy shit, your characters are so much better if you level them all the way up. Like, absurdly better. Well, he never joined the party. Same problem we had with uh, Eric the Dragon Soldier or whatever. It's like he was just so garbage compared to everyone else. Like, even Julia is better. <laughs> That's a sad thing. Mint is the only one I, Mint is the only one I could consider using just because she's useful for spells at least, but she doesn't have good MP. And Morton the Monk, too, you'd think for the spells, but he has 18 MP and that's it. He's just not... He can't contribute a lot. Um, and I guess let's go check out the battle. Yeah. <clears throat> the cutscene. According to King Gallum, evil powers gather ahead of here at Ground Seal. Master Max is captive in the ancient tower, opposite the Rocky Mountains over there. Ben, I'm worried about Master Max. We must make haste. Uh-oh. Whenever the screen gets dark, a villain has appeared. Ah, oh, what a simply magnificent view. First, I'd recommend that you think carefully before you do anything. Wouldn't you agree? In that voice, it's Michela, and also her face portrait. <laughs> That's the other way we could tell. We were praised as the shining force in Gallum, and it would seem that our reputation precedes us. What? The would it? Because I want to point out, Michela already knew who we were, and already knew we were the shining force, so I don't know if it's a matter of our reputation preceding us. It's more like it preceded us into Gallum in the first place. She's known since Max beat her in like the first game who we are. We've made it this far, but let's see what awaits us at this prairie. Is this a prairie? <laughs> it's sort of hard to tell what like biome the areas are on these outdoor maps because they're kind of all using the same tile set. I would not have guessed prairie. I would have guessed like a plains or a meadow. <laughs> I don't know what the difference is between a prairie and a plains anyway. I'm not an expert. There are a great number of strange orbs on the prairie. What could their purpose be? They're probably bombs. Oh ho ho, you do well to recognize their powers. Uh, our enemy on the prairie is just one of Michela's dolls. This is doubtless another trap set by Michela, no different than before. Be careful, then. It's great when the game is like, yeah, it's no different than before. It's just like the game telling you it's not interesting. But it actually probably will be, because uh, you'll also recognize this map from Shining Force 2. And in fact, we fought multiple battles on this map, because we have been. We fought one at the start of the game when we were initially going to Gallum. Then we fought another one when we left Gallum. Um, and then finally, we fought one at the end of the game when we had to return to Ground Seal. So this was a well-used map, uh, <laughs> and we'll, now we'll use it again. Um, man, yeah, it's got a ton of shit on it. Uh, this is Ground Seal the Tower. It looks a little different than the original game where it was like a little bigger and grander. And uh, this is the doll that we're going to fight with Bolt 2. We've got Dark Shamans or a 3 in Blastery, so they can really heal a lot now, so we'll have to really take them out. The Lesser Demons with Bolt 1. Um, these Mystery Spheres, which I don't seem to be able to click on. So I guess they're not a character that we can interact with. They're some sort of environmental feature. I'm assuming they're going to cast magic or blow up or something, as per usual. Uh, we've got the Skull Warrior still with a Counter Sword. Some High Priests stuff over here. Yeah, so most of the enemies on this map can cast magic. This is like a wizard battle. Uh, it's probably be quite tough because of that. Like, yeah, the wizards do a lot of damage. <laughs> More so than the melee enemies. Because um, magic ignores our defenses. And what is this weird little spot? I'm not even... I'm not really sure, because in the original, the map is slightly different in the original game, because in the original game we exited from Ground Seal, and so it was more like just in this part. Um, I, but I guess that's because it's like, oh, time passed between then and now. Um, this, we will be finding a secret character here, 
Uh, I believe they're in like one of the grass patches. It's sort of towards the top. Um, so we'll we'll check on that, and we'll probably actually egress and add them to the party so we can check them out because we don't have them for very many battles. <laughs> this is this is going to be map 19 of 22, so you can only use them in like four battles anyway, max. So we may as well grab them. Um, yeah, and then we I might actually do a little walk grinding on this map and just kind of catch everyone up a bit. So. Uh, thank you for watching, hypothetical viewers. In this chapter, we rescued King Gallum from some random monsters, and now we are hurrying on to reach uh, Ground Seal and stop the Dark Soul and various devils from being resurrected. But in order to do that, we gotta fight our way through this army of wizards. So look forward to that on the next episode of Shining Force Final Conflict. <laughs>